everyone. This is Liz from Liz Tarot. Uh, you know me a little bit, and I want to introduce and remind you of the lovely and illustrious Laura Greenwood from Laura's View and Tarot, too. How are you, Laura? Hey, I'm fine. Thank you for having me on, Liz. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, it's so great. I know your viewers know lots about you and a little bit about me and so on, but I just want to, I was just so funny. Your meteoric rise was so fun for me to see that people are interested in sort of truther and terror and comments and, and philosophies and stuff like that. So I just want to say, I really appreciate you being out there. Oh, thank you. It's been a really exciting experience. It has. So, now, I mean, I know when I started you, the channel, I thought yeah. I might be lucky to get to a hundred viewers. Yeah. But you know, I thought, you know, if I just reach a few people or lift up a few people, that's all that I really cared about. You know, I never saw myself having a channel that would be monetized or, you know, I've even been recognized when I was traveling and it was kind of a surprise. <laughs> I know. Same here. I mean, like I said, I mean, I was in, in deployed and I was doing readings for people unlisted and I didn't know that. YouTube jumped off unlisted, you know, put me in public. And the next thing I knew, I had 500 subscribers. <clears throat> like, <laughs> what's happening here, you know? <laughs> so it's really good. Now, I know you're moving or have moved to Maine. I, anything that your viewers don't already know, like, how is that going for you? Well, um, I did a short video showing the, um, the place I'm leasing before. I think I had much of anything in here. Yeah. And uh, I'll be in here permanently in the spring is the plan. Mm -hmm. Um Travel in the winter is a big consideration since I'm coming from Alaska to Caribou, Maine. That's over a 4,800 mile oh. road trip. And I do have my beloved cat story about if we flew, it would be at least three plane changes. Oh. And so I'm mulling options, um, you know, within a budget of how to get them here and with the least trauma to them possible. That's my top priority. But I will be here in the spring and I don't, unless our world changes greatly in the next few months, I don't plan to maintain that property I have in Alaska, a condo. In fact, a really good intuitive friend of mine once first dibs at it because she knows it'll have great energy. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. I mean, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I know your viewers really care about you a lot and we, and myself as well, we praying for you and like lifting you up to have all that spiritual strength they need to do that. I mean, I don't think I've ever moved 4,000 miles. I moved across the country bunches of times, the um, CONUS, you know? Yeah. So, so Laura, how did you get into tarot? Well, um, I need to start back before I was born. My grandmother was a little Scottish lady from Nova Scotia, um, and she immigrated to the United States. And sweet little tiny thing, not even five foot tall. Um, I remember calling her Granny Bird because she just seemed like a little sparrow, very neatly dressed and always, you know, very self-possessed. But despite this rather mainstream exterior, she read tea leaves. Mm. And... I can still remember one time when my brother and I were at my grandmother's house, She, we had to drink the tea. That was the biggest pitfall as a little child. And she <laughs> read our tea leaves for us. Now, my mother and my aunt, my, my grandmother had two daughters, and both of them didn't seem to inherit intuitive skills, and they thought it was all just hogwash. So they just, you know, they, they poo-pooed any um, abilities my grandmother had and any skills around the tea read that she would do and uh, she passed away before she could teach me or share once I developed an interest in things like that so I I think we all have some intuitive ability if we're willing to acknowledge it and I think the more we acknowledge it the more it develops just like training for physical fitness you know we all have a starting point if we can stand up we can move from there um, when I decided to try to honor my intuitive skills or abilities or gift, however you want to phrase it. Um, I didn't have that training in the tea leaf reading, but tarot was something that I could self-learn and kind of replace that with. Plus with our chaotic world and how fast events are unfolding, can you imagine how much tea I'd have to be drinking <laughs> <laughs> to ask current events questions? So yeah, you have to get up and say, I have to use the bathroom, hold off your back. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So that's that's how the tarot came about. And then um, um, Janine Morjo had, uh, when she was on YouTube, had some free tarot lessons. And I was already listening because I was fascinated with the current events aspect to tarot. 
for some reason, it had never occurred to me. I thought it was all a personal question type of thing. That's what most people pose to the cards, right. you know. And uh, I took her, her classes and then I paid for some private instruction and uh, uh, just felt like I've never been a good committee member. Uh, didn't want to really collaborate with anybody on a permanent full-time basis. And I just thought, if I'm going to do this, I just need to start a channel. Just need to just do this myself. So I told myself I was going to wait till I retired in May of 22, which was just a few months ago. This was in January. And I felt a very strong message. Don't wait till May. There's too much happening between now and then. Right. So it was February and I put the channel up and didn't even know what a tripod was, you know, and started just kind of fumbling and learning as I went, you know, and, and uh, that's so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. I love it. I love it. And I know that people glommed on right away because we can't in this crazy world, they can certainly use your support and some and mine as well and other people's, and especially since Janine is off YouTube now. I and you may, you may remember I trained with her too. I got on her Patreon, nothing private, but she was like my 12th YouTube uh, tarot teacher. You know, I've been doing it for on and off for 40 years, but you know, not necessarily thinking I'm a professional or anything. But yeah. Do you do any other card divination systems or other divination systems at all? I recently um tried pendulums. I wanted to remove any possible aspect of influencing the um, uh, results. And so I've been playing around with actually like holding it over a bar or something so that my hand, it might, so that the pendulum can get my energy, but my hand won't influence the outcome. Right. And trying that, it just seems to have zero nil results. So I think I'm sticking with tarot for now. <laughs> but I did. I mean, it's just too easy to see someone using a pendulum and going, yeah, and we can't hold our hands perfectly still, you know, but the thing is, when you're using something like that, you're trying to let your higher self communicate. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and if, you know, and personally, I don't know about you, but I always, I always um, have myself well guarded with prayer before I use anything like that. These tools, it's like, you know, safety goggles when you use power tools. And um, yeah. I only want to access my higher self or yeah. our loving creator have insights that come straight from source. So um, no other tricky, mischievous, other, you know, energies are welcome. <laughs> oh, I agree. I agree. I think that energetic protection is key because it's, I mean, we're, this is not as, as racy as say a Ouija board, but this work can definitely bring in energies if you're, you know, dark and dreary and things like that. I agree. Yeah. Uh, do you have any upcoming ideas of changes for your channel? I don't see that you do, but just curious if you have other, you want to carry on with the same beautiful technique. Do you have other ideas or changes of your setup or anything like that? Well, I'm hoping as time goes on that I'll get a chance to talk with other creators that are doing different types of divination science. So I'm open to that. Um, and as we know, there's, there is in, in our world, the way it is, there's conflict, there's, disputes and what have you. And I just want to set those aside. And if someone in good faith wants to talk with me, then I in good faith want to talk with them. Right. You know, period. Um, right. Wouldn't mind exploring collaborations, but like I said, on a, uh, just from my personality, um, looking ahead, I am pretty much just a solo operator. I know when I was teaching, I would go to my principal and I would say, please, for the love of God, don't put me on a committee. Give me three jobs. <laughs> don't put me on one committee you know so make me the cleanup crew make me this or make me that but please don't put me on a committee and I kind of feel like YouTube would be the same way if I was trying to do a, a project consistently with a team right right no I agree I like that and I think it's quite a baller move to become a content creator because you know you get sometimes you get haters and stuff like that it's helped get me stronger to kind of you know uh you probably get you probably get all lovely comments but sometimes I get like hey same vague crap when well, someone commented one time I'm like hey you know go watch something else yeah <laughs> um uh what was I was gonna ask another fun question which was um where do you get your news from like do you want to share some of your sources and do you just get a drop of like oh I need to ask about that like an intuitive hit about what to read about well I've always been um, a voracious reader and I've had 
an interest in current events ever since I left the mainstream because I got tired of being spoon fed all these narratives that just weren't sitting right. So I probably, about five years ago, six years ago, I seriously started looking at alt media. And over time, you know, my, I finally, I thought I've got to find one voice that I trust. I did. It's funny because I no longer go to that one voice, but at the time he was, he seemed to be presenting some alt media news and information that was accurate. And then I just kind of watched, okay, who does this creator that I somewhat trust seem to be appearing with? Let's check them out. Let's check them out. Let's check them out. And I found out uh, using different search engines and Google, because every time I looked for like, you know, alternate media using traditional searches, all you get is, you know, it's that you didn't get any supportive hits, you know, as far as your searches yes, go. Yeah. yeah. And so it's expanded. Now I've got a couple of blogs I read regularly, um, some compilation things. And sometimes I share those with viewers, you That's know, like I, I really like the, um, the, aggregate sources that Rose Rambles puts out and I've mentioned her numerous times. So I check her almost daily and then I'll click on some of her links and read those and things like that. Um, several times I've read a bl blog that asks the viewers a question and that right away that tips me up. This is a good tarot question. So I'll show that blog, the question and say, nice. no, let's ask the cards. Nice. But I just kind of have an inquisitive mind. And so um, I just try to find topics I'm interested in or that I've recently tried to learn more about and then you know share that with my my channel I love that I, those are my questions I know you like to keep things short and I've been shortening my videos as well uh do you have any else anything else you'd like to share today and if we could do a read oh uh, gosh um yeah ask me three questions that you hadn't planned on oh shoot okay this this is my and they can be questions. like I said no holds barred okay no holds barred. Okay, this is crazy, but I do follow Kim Gogan. Okay. Okay. So so um Ben Fulford was asked about Kim Gogan. Now Cliff High has poo-pooed her. A lot of people are poo pooed You either hate her or love her. That's why I want to read it. Hate her lover. Right. He says she's like an uh, AI robot. She says she's an AI robot and that she's like the highest form of AI. Because no one's I ever agree. Made. I agree. So can you do a read on that? Or maybe are you done with that? Is he like uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's Doesn't mean she's question, not kind of a ballsy got question. some good possibilities for us, you know, that that there's not information. If I was talking with her, I would treat her just like any other sentient being and uh, with respect and kindness. Um, but yeah, no, that's my, my feeling on her. And I think that's accurate. So let's see. So we're going to ask the universe. And since I don't have two cameras going here. I'll just hold up three cards, answer, clarification, more information if we need it, okay? So, Kim, go. I'm gonna throw cards as well for the heck of it. Okay. Is the speculation that she is somehow AI or let's say augmented. Okay, sure. Being um, accurate and is there more information the universe wants us to know? I'm dividing in three, like I always do, just so you know. Keep in the middle. Yeah, okay. me too. We both and do you're going to see the nice cards before I do. Okay? Pardon me? So, our answer. Whatever she is, she is a white hat. Yeah. And her job is to help humanity correct its course. And definitely white hat. Definitely white hat. Got mm -hmm. some really good positive energy there. Mm -hmm. She's well worth listening to, whether she's completely human or completely not. Yeah. I like that. You want to see what I got? Yeah. Let me go to um my, oh my gosh, it's not talking to my camera. Oh, sorry. Well, okay. I'll just hold up mine too. Like I get all these wonderful cards all the time. This is the immediate past. This is the immediate past reconciliation, trying to reconcile the world. And she does, she so much cares about humanity. So if she, this is the, the top line, oopsie the top line, she so much cares about humanity, like really bonds with humanity. I get these cards about her all the time, loving and try, trying to make a happy home for everybody, like whether she's yeah. augmented or whatever. And look, we got the magician, which is like communication, making it happen, but also- Making it manifest, yeah. Uh, 
Right, and manifest, but I also thought, you know, if I had an AI robot, what card, you know, you can set the cards to mean what you want. So like, I think the magician would be the one of the closest for like, an, as you say, an augmented being. And I think she has, um, she's definitely making, this is the bottom row for the kitchen and ice bread. She uh -huh. definitely is making it happen, making things move. Because sometimes the, um, you you got the knight of swords, but also get like kind of making it happen. I think she's like maybe taking out some mad guys or doing yeah. some really good work. And, yeah. she's, and that's you know, a strategic and, win. That's, you know, there's not excessive bloodshed. There's a strategic win. Right. There. And then something that, also to consider too. Yeah. I didn't mean to talk over you. I'm sorry. I'm not a, you know, that's okay. Go ahead. Um, I have read and I agree that AI can develop to such an extent that they can be vulnerable to dark and light forces too, either one. So we need right. to keep her in our intentions and prayers that it, no matter whether she's carbon-based originally or not, that she stays in the light and keeps doing this fabulous work that helps us. Yeah, interesting because I'm saying the chariot too, which is like making things happen, arraying the forces, making things happen. So I always get really lovely cards for her. So regardless of, you know, but that was honestly, it was a new concept for me because I thought Thomas, fellow Thomas Melville, Melville had met her. And so I'm, I'm just very curious about all of that. But anyway, who knows? But I thank you for going there with me. Oh, sure. Okay, that was one. You got two more? Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, okay, so Cliff High. Cliff High is on Truth Social mentioning, hey, his um, altar reports, his stuff might, might, there might be something going on November 13th of this month. We're always looking at crazy dates, but what say you, Laura? Well, I don't date bag, okay? Um, the universe doesn't recognize time as we do. I do believe that in this next 90 days, we may see a lot of changes, but that same statement could have been made for the last couple of years. Okay. Yeah. I've also every had to kind of accept every, something. Saw, every full moon, every new moon. I'll, I'll yeah. okay. Now Cliff High has got an intellect I greatly admire. Yeah. However, um, I, as you know, I try to keep a positive focus and I don't think he always does. So I kind of have to indulge in him in small doses. Yes, I, and I've, you know, I've done the same But with same great thing respect for his intellect, I, even when I disagree with him, I can see where his opinion has come from yes. and, and yes. I value it, but I don't always right. agree. You know, and you could say that with just about anybody if you're a critical thinker. So, yeah. I mean, that's the way that goes. But since I started on this journey and made a commitment to look at current events, blend in the tarot, and then try to show people how they could make things manifest and be a little more, um, use their discernment. That's why I never tell someone not to listen to someone. I say right, I agree. to everybody, you know, it's, I it's do. It's up to your own discernment, what you do. Yes, exactly. That's what we need to be developing is our critical thinking and our discernment skills. Well, since I started on this path, I've had to accept that if there are multiple timelines, I, and that means the people that listen to me, have somehow had a contract or chosen to stay and be the last ones that change. So I would have liked to have already been in 5D. Thank you very much. You I know, know I know. Like, do we have to stay here? And... Like, 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 am I stuck here? have to stay here? All so, right. And I know I can operate in 5D, but I don't believe I yet live in 5D. Right. So, I, you know, I had to accept that. And I thought, okay, hire self. Next time we sign contracts, can we sign a few less? <laughs> well, would you want to skip that and go to the next question then? Sure. Yeah. Um, can you say what, anything happening in the next, by the, by Christmas or by the end of the year, any events that you can think about? Uh, I will say this. I was going to leave uh, Maine. I had plane tickets, you know, round trip, November 2nd. And I've heard so much chatter that things could happen by November 1st and travel my, that I moved my return to, to Alaska up by a week and I'm leaving next week. So I'll be back in Alaska on the 26th. So I gave it enough credence that there could be, you know, events, you know, significant events that finally, you know, are, are out in the public eye that I moved my, my travel plans by a week for that. And I would have gone a little closer if I could have without having horrible, horrible, you know, um, service fees for changing my tickets and everything. Nice. So, yeah, I, I think something's going to happen. But like I said, I kind of think, you know, wherever it happens, we're going to be the last ones that, you know, that enjoy it. If yeah. you believe, like I believe, that there are more than one timeline and possibility happening and, you know, reality is a very, very beautiful and multi-layered thing. 
you know, so. It is, it, it so is. And the thing, the Mandela effect, all very interesting things. Well, I think in a way you didn't even have to throw cards. You answered the questions and, and it's good and we're good. Yeah. A lot of times what I do with the cards, now, I, I seldom have the cards completely disagree with me. Sometimes they show me something I haven't suspected. But again, I, I'm mulling over current events and then I'm trying to use my discernment and intuition, you know, and then I, the cards kind of tell us more, but they, I, they're usually not totally different. If they are, then I would probably know that I needed to uh, have had a different question, a better focus, you right. know, more preparation before using them or what have you. Yeah. So I do a lot of counseling and coaching with these. And I find that my psyche or my intuition, as I say, bounces off the cards in terms of helping someone. And that's where yeah. a lot of the ministry comes. And then often they go into working with me in healing or coaching or something like that or counseling. Um, and that's how often I get messages. So it's really good. Well, Laura, gosh, I thank you so much for joining us, joining me today. Well, this was fun. Thank you. It's yeah. good to be on your show. Yeah. Well, we'll say goodbye and um, I'll be watching you over on your channel. Okay. All right. And I will do the same. Take care, dear. Bye. Okay. Love and light. Bye. Bye.